What is up, YouTube? It's your boy, The Walk 71, PlayStation with a 4, and I'm here with another wrestling review for you all, this time being NXT TakeOver Portland with my review. Overall, you know what I'm saying? I, I thought the show was good, and this is like, like the show literally just ended a couple minutes ago, so I'm trying to get this review recorded as quick as possible. It's like, I, I enjoyed the show for the most part. Good takeover. They still have yet to have a bad takeover. It was really good. But I felt like that last match, the ending of the main event was overbooked, and I'll get into it. Um, I'll get into it when we get into it, so I can get this like done as soon as possible. Give me one second. I'm one arm again with this review because I don't feel like setting up my microphone. Uh, okay. So we opened up the show with the NXT North American Championship, Donovic, Donovic, Dominic Dijakovic versus Keith Lee for the NXT North American Championship. Might I say, fine match. I really enjoyed this match. Now, these two have been having matches on NXT TV. They had one, like, right, what was it? It was, like, one they had when NXT was still on the network. And then they had another match because they had one match that ended in a double contest. And it was supposed to have a takeover match around that time. I'm trying to remember what like time that was around. I think that might have been around. Um, that might have been around Mania, actually. Mania, like that Mania takeover time period, I believe. I'm trying to remember. But they had a match ended in no DQ. They had another match. Dynamic. Dynam fuck. You know who I'm talking about. Dominic Dijakovic uh, beat Keith Lee. Then they had another match when NXT like premiered onto USA like a week after, I believe, it premiered on USA or two weeks after because AEW was like a thing because I remember watching both shows and Keith Lee won that match. Then they had another match and I believe they ended in like a double DQ or something. So this was officially the tiebreaker you could say between them two. So this match, they put it all on the line. I can't even lie. It was fun to watch we can go from keith lee doing the double chest shot on a ch on a announced chair or doing it on the guardrail or you could talk about donovic dijakovic doing a swan time bomb off the top rope to the outside onto keith lee while he was sitting on the announcer's chair i thought that was pretty cool uh we had don uh dominic doing a spanish fly to keith lee for a near fall there was another part of the match where keith lee did the spirit bomb and donovic Dominic got out of it just by powering up. I thought that was really interesting. And um, we get towards the end of the match. Both men are trying to set up for their finishers. Dijakovic trying to set up for the feature eyes, but his back gave out, and Keith Lee eventually countered it into the jackhammer for the one, two, three, and he retained the NXT North American Championship. I like this match. I think they picked the right match to open up the show with. It got the crowd hot. It was good for. The 20 plus minutes it lasted, it was a really good match. And I'm glad that it was a title match because you have to think that these two have, like, you know, these two literally gave their all in this match. Like, they they, they did their stuff with this match. It was really good. They pulled out all the stops in this match. And I'm just glad that it was for a title. It was for something. It wasn't just these two, you know, just fighting just because. Because I feel like the match would have still been, you know, fun, amazing. It would have been great if it wasn't for the North American title. But having them do, you know, pull out essentially all the stops and pretty much try to kill each other for the championship, it brings value to the title and it also brings value to the match because it just shows that how important this title is to them and to anybody, really, that they're willing to end their careers just to either win or retain the title. So I thought the match was really good. Great opener. And I'm going to go ahead and say it now. It is my match of the night for the pay-per-view, if I want to be completely honest. Really fun match. The next match we end up getting was a street fight between Dakota Kai and Tegan Knox. The buildup for this match has actually been pretty great. They had like a, a match that kind of fell flat, but I knew it was to set up for this match. But basically, you know, it all started at TakeOver War Games, which was the one TakeOver I was actually at. And basically, Dakota Kai turned on Tegan Knox because they were best friends. She turned on her slammed the uh, cage door into her knee, all types of stuff, took her out of the War Games match, essentially. And then it just, you know, everything else that's been happening on NXT just built up into this match. It started off instantly. Like, Tegan Knox is making her entrance, and Dakota Kai, like, pulled up on her. They start fighting through the crowd. Tegan Knox speared Dakota Kai through one of the um, through one of the guardrail, through one of the barricade. Uh, yeah, I guess, yeah, one of the barricades. That I thought that was pretty cool. They started the match hype. Uh, there was one part of the match where 
Uh, Dakota Kai tried to hit her with a wiffle ball bat, and she completely broke it on the ring apron. I guess she was trying to kill uh, Tegan Knox. Uh, Tegan Knox put a trash can over Dakota Kai's head and went for some type of senton. It like looked clean, but at the same time it didn't. But it was it was it was a cool, I guess, little setup. Then we get back into the ring, and then they're just going at it. Tegan Knox did like a nice German suplex onto a steel trash can um, onto Dakota Kai. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, we get to a part of the match where they start to implement the story of the knee brace because both of them hurt their knees, so both of them got on knee braces. And this time, Tegan Knox got her revenge. She hit Dakota Kai uh, with a laptop, and it looked like one of them, them thick, la- like thick Lenovo laptops that had like the mouse in the center of the keyboard. One of them laptops. She hit Dakota Kai in the knee after Kai, like you know, hit her with a bunch of uh, running kicks to the face when she like taped her to the ring post. So then she started going after it. She took her knee brace off, all types of stuff. And then we later, um, you know, get to, like, the later half of the match, I guess, or, like, the last, you know, moments of it. And it looks as though Tegan Knox is about to put Dakota Kai through the table. And right as she, you know, puts the chair on her neck, she climbs up. And as soon as she does that, some tall Amazon-looking chick pulls up, which ended up being Reina Gonzalez, who is now Raquel Gonzalez, she attacks Tegan Knox. She uh, throws Dakota Kai off of the table, and she choke slams uh, Tegan Knox onto the table. But Tegan Knox didn't go through the table. Like it got more of a reaction because it just shows how like brutal it was. Basically, she threw Tegan Knox, and Tegan Knox caught some air on it. And instead of going through the table, she hit the table, and the table just went over, and she died. And then Dakota Kai covered Tegan Knox and won the match. So it looks as though they're setting up Dakota Kai with a heavy as a heel. So now she has somebody, you know, back up, I guess. And it's probably going to continue this feud between them two. But honestly, I, I see where this is going to go uh, between Knox and Kai. Um, I see where this is going to go. It's probably going to lead to another match between them and probably have Knox win the feud. But I would prefer... To see Dakota Kai win the feud as the heel because I feel like she needs this more than Knox because, you know, the whole thing about it is, like, you could have Knox lose the feud, let Dakota Kai kind of, like, build up months and months as a heel, and then they can have a match that would mean much more with Knox winning at, like, the Mania TakeOver next year or something. Or the SummerSlam TakeOver, maybe, if they want to do that. Um, overall, I thought the match was really good. Like, they, they, they laid it out for each other. Like, they was like kind of fucking each other up like it was it was a pretty good street fight um i i enjoyed it a lot i thought the match was pretty cool i thought it was dope so after that we got johnny gargano versus finn balor now this was the match that got a lot of hype and it was because everyone has this thing in their mind where if they get somebody they think they they think they know can have good matches and somebody that can have good matches but also can have a bad match you put them two in a match and then it's like you know people are like oh this is a dream matchup essentially and it got a lot of hype and the match itself was kind of mid i'm not even gonna lie between gargano and balor the match was cool i guess like you know it it kind of had a formula that i just like noticed where they both wrestled really slow within the first 10 minutes and I was already like done with the match after 10 minutes like I was kind of bored of it because like these are two smaller guys and they can wrestle more faster paces and they just started off doing you know submission rest holds there was one a cool rest hold Finn Balor did with his legs where he you know uh basically had his legs um you know choking out Gargano then he started doing push-ups I thought that was pretty cool um but yeah, it, it's one of those matches that got a lot of hype, and then it just ends up being like mid. That's why like I didn't really have expectations for this match. Or I didn't have high expectations for this match because I know, you know, there's always a match on the takeover card that you have a lot of expectations for, and then it ends up being you know just an okay match. And that's essentially what this was. Um, like I said, it had the formula of being slow in the first half, and then kind of picking up towards the end. You know, towards the end, they took it to the outside a lot. Finn Balor uh, did the running drop kick, but he did it on the announce tables and, like, kicked Johnny Gargano into the barricades. He brought him back into the ring. He did the coup de gras, 
and then set up for the 1916. He hit it, and then he pinned Gargano for the win, but it was like the the pin he did was just so crazy. Like, he just had his whole balls in my man's face. Like, that's... That's not that's that's not cool. Like you're not offset, bro. Like no, nah, that that ain't that ain't it. That ain't it, Chief. Like I, I don't really have much to say about this match just because like I didn't really care for it and like it just wasn't like you know it wasn't the greatest match. Like it wasn't a horrible match or nothing. It was just like it's cool. Like it happened. Um, it wasn't better than this match though. This match was actually fire. The NXT Women's Championship: Bianca Belair versus Rhea Ripley is the match we have next. Now, there's, you know, kind of a build-up to it, but then there's also a fact they're going in because Charlotte Flair won the Royal Rumble, and it's been the rumored match, and now by the time you see this, or if you've seen the show already, then you know it's confirmed now. But basically, Charlotte Flair is like, I've beaten Bayley, I've beaten Becky, what about NXT? And then, you know, Rhea Ripley is like, I've beaten you, but you haven't beaten me, which almost guarantees that Charlotte's probably going to win the NXT title. Um, <laughs> the NXT Women's title for the second time. Uh, the matches, this match was actually really good. I enjoyed this match for the most part. Bianca Belair came out with the black history attire and it was so amazing. It was so great. I got to give, I'm pretty sure Bianca Belair put the attire together cause she makes all of her gear. I got to give her a props on that. That was a great attire. Amazing attire. Rhea Ripley came out, did her entrance, which is amazing. Then we get the match itself. Where do I even go with this? It was so such a good match. And this is like a match we got on NXT once, but this is like a feud I've actually wanted to see for a minute just because I wanted to see how they would work together. And they actually worked really great together. I, I thought the match was uh, was fun. Um, let's see. Where do I even... It's so much going on. There was one part of the match where Bianca Belair and... Uh, What's this woman's name? Rhea Ripley have a slap fest while Rhea Ripley is sitting on the um sitting on the ring apron. Not the ring apron, the, the turnbuckle. And then eventually Belair catches her and does a uh what is that shit? What is that move called? A gorilla plus, I guess? Where they, she holds the wrestler up and then drops him like face first onto the ground. So we got one of those. And then we had basically a reverse fest into both of them trying to set up for their moves. And that was pretty cool. But then there was a part where it looks like Rhea Ripley was trying to do something, uh, and then she ends up getting tossed to the outside. And then Belair ends up doing a tope con hilo over the top rope to the outside onto Bianca Belair, onto Rhea Ripley, I'm sorry. And I thought that was pretty cool because I've never seen her do something like that. She actually did the hair whip too. I don't remember the last time I've seen that. It might have been at the War Games takeover, but I thought it was uh, pretty cool. We get to the later like the last moments of the match and basically uh Rhea Ripley catches Bianca Belair on the top rope she grabs her arm and she kind of like um pushes her face first into the turnbuckle and then she catches her with the riptide for the one two three now personally I thought the match was great and the ending was flat just because like these two were really going at it for a good amount of time going back and forth actually putting on like a show you know, people doing, you know, acrobatics to the outside and. Doing all types of acrobatics to the outside and all types of stuff. And I thought it was great. I just felt like maybe it shouldn't have ended like that, where it just like, you know, it was just like, ah, OK, you OK, cool. Um, but yeah, the match was cool after the match. Charlotte instantly showed up. She took out Rhea Ripley, hit her with the, uh, what's the name of her fucking finish? I don't even know. What's the name of that move? Um, the natural selection. Just the natural selection on Rhea Ripley. Then she also takes out Bianca Belair. So that pretty much, and she also confirms that she's going after Rhea Ripley for the NXT Women's Championship. She holds the title in the air. She takes out. Uh, Bianca Belair, like I said, so that maybe that might indicate that we'll get a triple threat match at Mania. Um, she also got a mixed reaction. People were chanting, you don't even go here because of what Bianca Belair said. That's pretty interesting. I guess we'll just have to wait to see what happens on Monday Night Raw. So after that, we got an NXT tag team title match. The Broserweights versus the Undisputed Era. You know, the Broserweights won the Dusty Rose Tag Team Classic. They won the Classic. 
And now I guess they just I guess that's a new rule when you win the Dusty Classic is that you get a title match. So they end up getting a title match. The Brozoids come out in the uh, their little like I guess like vehicle they got and it has the trophy on it. So that was pretty cool. They came out. Uh, Riddle ended up doing the how much fish could Bobby Fish fry if Bobby Fish could fry fish. Did it a couple times, and then. Undisputed Era came out and they got it. They pulled up and they start fighting. It started off with Riddle and Kyle O'Reilly starting the match off. The match itself was a match that, like, you know, was kind of in a dead spot because it's in that match right before the main event. And everybody knows the match right before the main events always gets shafted for some odd reason because it's like the crowd needs time to kind of cool down and get their energy back up so that they are like, you know, you know, red hot for the main event. So, basically, that's what that was. Um, the tag match was fun uh, for the most part. I enjoyed it. It was a lot of back and forth between it, but then you also have to add in a factor that uh, maybe in this match there might be a point where maybe Pete Dunn turns on Matt Riddle and, you know, goes back. <coughs> My bad. He goes back to being the heel Pete Dunne we know and love or Matt Riddle turns. So they were kind of teasing that in the match because there was a few miscues between the Bros Race. There was one part where Matt Riddle was on the top rope. And I believe it was Kyle O'Reilly pushed, Matt, uh, pushed Pete Dunne into Matt Riddle. And then Matt Riddle fell like, you know, you know his nuts on the, uh, on the apron. Not the apron, the uh, top turnbuckle. Then there was another miscue where Matt Riddle accidentally hit Pete Dunne with the spear. So there was a factor going into that match. But then, um, overall, it was good. It had a very surprise finish with the Brozoways going over, defeating um, the Undisputed Era, Red Dragon, Kyle O'Reilly, Bobby Fish, and winning the NXT Tag Team titles. I was not expecting them to win. I thought that, you know, they have them win the Dusty Rose Tag Team Classic. They do the little stuff they was doing on NXT TV with the... Uh, with them, you know, going on their journey to get to Portland, but I never thought that they would actually win the tag team titles. I thought that was a very surprising and unpredictable finish because a lot of people were expecting somebody to turn on somebody, but they did the complete opposite. It seems like these two are going to be teaming uh, going forward for at least a few more months or however long this reign ends because this actually would have been the perfect time to set up a match between them two at uh, the Mania TakeOver because they got from February to April. So this they could have set something up, but it seems as though we might just get another tag team match between them two and I'm not complaining about it. It was a good match overall. So after that we get to the main event of this entire show for the NXT championship. You have Tommaso Ciampa going up against the NXT champion Adam Cole. Baby. Anyways, the match was good. I enjoyed it for the most part. There was a lot of stuff, you know, typical NXT main event. You know, you're going to get kickouts and no sales and all types of stuff. That's just, that comes with the territory. That's wrestling in general now. It, the, I think the only company that I can think of that doesn't do all of that is probably NWA. But I don't even watch NWA on a consistent basis like I should. But every time I watch, I have not seen uh, moments in the match where people just no sell and kick out of like, Flipping pile drivers and co reds and all types of stuff. Honestly, that's just the direction wrestling is going towards where it's false finishes and kicking out of big moves just so the crowd can react and pop as they, you know, would like to. But I mean, it, it is what it is. It didn't take away from the match. I thought the match was, was fine. I mean, it's a good main event. Uh, there was one part of the match I really liked where um, <laughs> it looked like Adam Cole was about to power bomb Tommaso Ciampa on the table, but instead he reversed it and power bombed Adam Cole into the table, and that looked like that hurt. There was another part where Adam Cole looked like he was about to set up for the Panama Sunrise on the apron, but Tommaso Ciampa reversed it into a, um air raid crash onto the apron. I thought that was cool. We get towards the end of the match, and then this is where the, the you know typical Adam Cole matches go, where Undisputed Era gets involved. The referee is taken out. Undisputed Era gets involved. Eventually, Tommaso Ciampa takes them all out. He hits Roddy Strong with the Widow's Bell DDT. And then he does like a court screw something onto the outside to take out everybody. And then somehow, some way, Kyle O'Reilly managed to pass Adam Cole the NXT Championship. Looks like he's about to hit Tommaso Ciampa with it. That's when the referee gets taken out. And then out of nowhere, just completely out of nowhere, here's Johnny Gargano, who, like, lost earlier. He, like, Tommaso Ciampa's holding the title. 
because the whole story of it is that he's trying to get his life back. Goldie is the one thing that kept him sane, and it was taken away from him. He never lost the title. It was taken away from him because of his neck injury. So he's holding the title. It looks as the, it seems like the story of the match is that if Tommaso Ciampa loses, it's going to be because of the title. And it wasn't. So Johnny Gargano has the title, takes it from Tommaso Ciampa. Ciampa's like, what are you doing? He hits Tommaso Ciampa in the face with the championship. One, two, three. Adam Cole retains the NXT Championship, the only member in Undisputed Era now to have a championship, but nonetheless, he retains, and the show just ends like that. Um, Overall, the match itself was cool. If it was on NXT TV, it would be good. It was on TakeOver. It, it was a good match for the most part. The match itself wasn't bad. I enjoyed it. Um... It was just the it was I just felt like the ending of the match was really overbooked. It was so much going on in like those last like minutes of the match. Between Undisputed Era getting involved to the ref bump to Johnny Gargano um getting involved and hitting Tommaso Champion with the title. I just thought they like put too much into like the last minute of like the last couple of minutes of the match. Like I see what they're doing. I see that they're trying to do this final match between Gargano and Ciampa. And I guess this time Gargano's going to be the, the the heel. Because, you know, this is all about Tommaso Ciampa getting his title back. But it's just like they just added... I don't, they just added something to the story. How do I explain this? They added something to the story that, you know, I wouldn't say was necessary. Because they are... You know, these two have to have their final match that they never got because Ciampa got hurt. But it felt like they just added that in there. They just put another hurdle in front of something that was as clear as day. Like, it seemed as though Ciampa was going to lose at this takeover. And it was probably going to be like, you know, Undisputed Era getting involved or, you know, you know Adam Cole cheating with the championship. Like, Goldie was always going to be the decisive finish. And then it would lead to him getting another title match and winning the title at the Mania TakeOver and having his moment, essentially. (laughs) But no, they just threw in the Gargano turn. I don't even know if it's really considered a turn, but it's going to lead to a match between them. And now it's just like, who is Adam Cole going to face now at the Mania TakeOver? Is it going to be Velveteen Dream, maybe? Is it going to be Keith Lee in a winner-takes-all match? Is it going to be Ciampa and Cole at Mania? Because, you know, they're trying to add NXT matches to WrestleMania, which I'm kind of iffy on because, like, NXT is his own thing. They don't need, like, they probably need it just for the recognition, you know, so the, the quote-unquote ratings war so they can actually win it. But I could care less about that stupid shit. Um, yeah, I just don't know how to wrap my head around it. It was, it was a good show, though, overall. Like, this was another excellent takeover. A lot of people are saying it's, like, one of the best. I don't know. I'm. I still got NXT Takeover in New Orleans in my top three, and then um, NXT Takeover Our Evolution, I believe, the one that had Sami Zayn and Neville, because that's still like my favorite NXT match of all time is Neville and Sami Zayn. I love that match. Um, but overall, good show. Um, my match of the night, hands down, is going to the North American Title match between Keith Lee and Dominic. Oh my God, Dominic Dijakovic. I thought that match was amazing. It was a great ending to their feud. They had the moment where, you know, Keith Lee lifted Dijakovic on his shoulders and put him on the uh, turnbuckle so he can have his moments of glory. And then Keith Lee celebrated with his championship. And it was a good, like, it was just a good ending to a feud that we've seen coming to fruition on TV. So I, that's why I enjoyed it. The women's match was great. Um, honestly, all the matches slapped, except for you know, the Gargano Balor match. It was a match I knew was not going to be good, so I had no expectations for it. And it was cool. The right person won. But, you know, a lot of people are going to overrate the match and say it was the best match on the show, which I highly disagree. It was cool. Um, Overall, TakeOver, another good show. NXT knows what they're doing. Now we just got to see what happens on Wednesday. Future videos, you know, I'm going to, was it next week? No, two weeks from now, uh, we got two shows I'm actually going to be reviewing, hopefully. WWE... Super Showdown, was it three? Yeah, I guess it's Super Showdown three, the Saudi Arabia show maybe, or it might be four. Jesus, it, it, it's one of these, one of these shows. 
I'm going I'm to review the Saudi Arabia show because I got to see how The Fiend kills Goldberg. And then I'm also going to be reviewing AEW Revolution that is once again in my hometown and I cannot go because I am in school. Um, but anyway, guys, you know what to do. Like, comment, favorite, subscribe. Do what you do to support me. You follow me on all my social media links down in the description below. Anyway, guys, I'm out. Peace.